Hello again, it's Rick here. This tutorial is going to start the process of making a version of Tetris, the well-known shape game. So I've done phase one, which essentially is working out the grid positions and uh, a system for storing all the grid blocks in an array. So let's just have a look at the source code. I've called the game Rictris. Why not? Yeah, normal sort of setup stuff here. And then we come down to some variables. Uh, size 48. This is the size of each individual block, okay? And uh, we can change that, and you'll see that that makes a big difference to how the uh, the game is displayed. Grid X and Grid Y, they define the size of the grid, 10 across by 16 down. And then we've got X offset and Y offset, and this is where exactly the grid is going to be displayed within the window. So we can change those values whenever we want to, and the whole game can shift around. So it's, it's a good idea to, to set these parameters up and not hard code them within the game, because it, it can be difficult then to change things later on. We have an array called grid. It's full of integers, and its size is uh, grid x by grid y, 10 by 16. So this will store every block position within the display of the game. So if you know Tetris, uh, the blocks build up from the bottom. So within this array, we will store what's happening in the game. We've got go subload images. Let's right click and go to that. Okay, this simply just loads in the various different colored blocks, red, orange, pink, black, blue, green, and purple. I've taken these blocks from a game that we did many moons ago called Touch and Go. They're very appropriate for this demonstration. So the next routine is create block sprites. Let's go and have a look at that. What this does is it creates sprites for every single grid position. So we start with a counter, counter equals 1. Then we do for y equals 1 to grid y, and for x equals 1 to grid x. So it goes across the x first in the grid. It creates sprite count, number 1, uh, and sets it to red image, just for the sake of setting a, a value. And that's red images here, this, this red block. Sets a sprite size of sprite 1 to size, comma, size. And if you remember, size was defined up here, 48. So if you change that, the sprites will all change in size because they're being defined from that. Increase the count. We do next x and next y and return. So that just generates 10 by 16 sprites, 160 sprites. Okay, then we go to fill grid. This is to fill the grid with random numbers because at the moment there's no game and I just have an empty grid and I want to see that the system's working. So again, I do for x equals 1 to grid x, for y equals 1 to grid y. I do col equals random 0, 7. Okay, so I generate a random number between 0 and 7 and grid x, y equals that. And then we come back out of that. So... That's the main setup. Let's go back to where we had at the start. So in the do loop, I've got uh, a few things going on. Go sub fill grid, again, just fills a grid with random numbers. Then I go sub update grid. It's an important routine. So this runs through the grid array and displays the correct blocks. So it sets the count to 1 again for y equals 0 to grid y minus 1. We're starting the loops from 0. Uh, you'll see why we need that in a moment. Set sprite visible. I turn every sprite on by default, but then I check if the grid position, x plus 1, y plus 1 equals 0, then there's no block there, so I turn that sprite off. There is a sprite there, but you'll not see it when the, the sprites are drawn. Then I say, well, if it's not 0, is it 1? If it's 1, then I set it to the red image. If it's not 1, is it 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc.? And it will set one of these because that's those are the only values that it can be. Then after all that, I set the sprite image count, the current count of the, of the sprites, to the image number that was chosen from this logic looking at all these uh, values. Then I set the sprite position of the current sprite. We times it by the size. Now this is why we started at zero. Because if we had 1, we'd actually be offset too much. So we have to have x 0 to start with. Times size plus the offset. Y times the size plus the offset. 
increase the count, do it again. Okay, next Y and return. So that will go across the X and down the Y and fill in all of the sprites in the right colours. Go back to the main loop. Okay, then we do a sleep. What does sleep do? Well, it just pauses the game for 500 milliseconds, so half a second. Then we do a sync, draw everything, and then we loop back. So let's just run that and you can see what happens. Okay, every half a second it's randomly generating all the cells in different numbers, drawing them all, doing a sleep, and again, starting again. So if we change that sleep to, say, uh, 2000, it's going to take, oop, don't want to broadcast it. We run that. It's waiting now two seconds before it's drawing it. And if we took the sleep out totally, it's crazy, super fast. Okay, so this is phase one of building Rictris. Okay, we have to know that the sprites are going to be displayed on screen in the right place, that we've got a, a way to store what's happening in the game. Um, there's a few things I'd like to show you as well. So we'll take the sleep back to 200, or oh, was it 500? It's 500. Um, I've got this, go to display grid. This routine, it simply goes through the grid and it uh, prints out text telling me what's in the grid. So if we run it again, here you've got all the numbers that represent what's going on here. It's a great way for me to be sure what's happening in the game and I can use that as I develop the game. But obviously I wouldn't have it in the finished game. Always a good technique to have some kind of debug stuff going on um, when you're making something because a lot of values are invisible to you. So that's phase one. The next phase will be to start moving shapes down the screen. So that's what's next and I'm looking forward to that challenge and seeing how I get on. Okay, oh no. So there's another thing I want to show you. You can um, change this size. So if we change this size to just, if we change size to just 20, look what happens. We've got really small little blocks now. So it scales to the correct size. I mean, it could even make it really, I don't know about two. Let's see what happens when we run it at two. Be funny. Yeah, really tiny. <laughs> okay, so obviously that's going to be unplayable at two. So we we'll put it back to was it forty-eight? Was that too much? Yes, I think forty-eight was a number. Yeah, I mean, I could even make it huge and it will go off screen. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, crazy man. But that's the great thing about making things scalable. You've got full control and it's easy to change and chop and change it. So tune in um, tomorrow when I do the next phase of the game. I can't wait. It should be fun. Hope you're learning things. Subscribe, please. And um, yeah, see you next time.